There is a whole new group of weaponry out there that is bound to be a game changer, in the same way that gunpowder, aircraft, and ballistic missiles forever changed warfare, and that is hypersonic weapons. The speed of these weapons not only greatly reduces a defender's reaction time, but they are also able to penetrate nearly every modern air defense system. Hypersonic is defined as 5 times faster than the speed of sound, or 6,200 km per hour. And to be fair, we have technically had hypersonic weapons for decades. Practically all ballistic missiles fly faster than Mach 5, however there should be an asterisk next to that. They do not fly at a set speed, and their speed determines how far they will fly. It's like throwing a stone. The harder and faster you throw it, the farther it will go. What we are talking about here is hypersonic cruise missiles and glide vehicles. And just to define a few more terms, cruise missiles are weapons that are constantly under propulsion from an engine, like a typical commercial airline. Glide weapons rely on lifting surfaces, its speed, and altitude to reach its target. Because of this, their range is limited. They will eventually lose energy and come down to the ground. Hypersonic weapons being designed today include both of these types using scramjet engines or rocket boosters to get them up to speed to glide down to their targets, or even a combination of the two. Several major powers are currently working extremely hard to produce these weapons and get them into operational service, most notably Russia, China, and the US. Hypersonic flight has proven extremely difficult to perfect. The US has been known to work on hypersonic weapons for decades and have ran into numerous problems, and there has been reports of Russian test failures as well. As for specific hypersonic weapons, Russia is known to be working on several, some of which are due to be operational very soon. One is a Kinzel, a land and surface attack air launch weapon. Video has been released of it being carried and test launched by a MiG-31. It appears to look very similar to the Iskander ballistic missile, and may use the same booster. Second is Zircon. Zircon is an anti-ship missile, and will initially be launched from the Kirov class battle cruisers, with future plans to be launched from other ships, submarines, and even aircraft. And finally, the Avangard, a hypersonic glide weapon that will be boosted up to altitude and speed from an intercontinental ballistic missile, separate, and glide to its target at speeds of up to 20 times the speed of sound. Also, as I said, glide vehicles will lose speed as it travels, even more so if it maneuvers, as they are not continuously being propelled by an engine. Actual speed of impact will be significantly slower, and this is true with any glide vehicle. As for the US, they have been working on hypersonic weapons for decades. Despite this, they seem to be behind Russia. The US tested a system called the Falcon HTV-2 twice, in 2010 and 2011. They were similar in a sense to the Russian Avangard, being boosted by an ICBM-like rocket to speeds of up to Mach 20. In both tests, it was reported that they lost control of the vehicle about 9 minutes into flight. Another hypersonic test vehicle is the X-51 Wave Rider. It was tested four times between 2010 and 2013. Launched from a B-52, it flew at speeds of five times the speed of sound, being powered by a scramjet engine. Only one of the flights was completely successful, the other is either semi-successes and one complete failure. Work on hypersonic weapons in the US in recent years has been quiet. However, in the last year, in response to Russia's new weapons, the US has been rushing to catch up. In April, the US awarded Lockheed Martin a $1 billion contract to build new hypersonic weapons. Hypersonic weapons are extremely difficult to defend against for three reasons. Their speed, their ability to maneuver, and the altitude that they fly at. Their speed is an obvious problem. When a missile launch is detected, it will take the defender some time to react. In the US, this is known as the OODA loop. Observe, orient, decide, and then finally act. The faster the missile, the less time the defender has to get through this loop. Also, their speed makes tracking and intercepting them much more difficult. Ballistic missiles have very predictable trajectories, making them relatively easier to intercept, whereas hypersonic weapons have the ability to maneuver, making them unpredictable. And finally, the altitude. Most of these hypersonic weapons are stated to fly between 10 to 100 kilometers in altitude. This puts them in the upper atmosphere as flying lower in the atmosphere combined with their speed would create enormous amounts of stress, drag, and heat. Modern air defenses are typically geared at either defending against aircraft and cruise missiles flying in the atmosphere, or ballistic missiles flying much higher. Hypersonic weapons fall in between these two. So defending against these weapons is extremely difficult, but major powers are already working on defenses. Russia stated that its S-500 missile system already has some ability, and also the US naval-based SM-6 and Army's Patriot may have some ability to intercept slower, flying hypersonic missiles and glide vehicles that have slowed down as they reach their target. Another proposed defense system is known as THAAD-ER, an upgrade of the existing THAAD, which would be designed specifically to defend against such threats. 
in the future, it may be possible that a defender can use laser weapons to defend against them. With lasers traveling at the speed of light, interception of these weapons could be much more simple. However, land and surface based lasers are quickly scattered and absorbed by the atmosphere. This greatly limits the range of current laser systems. This problem will have to be overcome, or an alternative firing platform, such as an aircraft that flies higher up in the thinner atmosphere, will have to be developed. But it will be a while before any real defenses can be put into place, similar to how we still do not have any real defenses against a large scale intercontinental ballistic missile attack, even over half a century after they were first deployed. The same may become true with hypersonics. 